Hello everyone. Welcome to Redbus TS channel. Yesterday, President Trump uh, signed an executive order uh, that actually asks all the federal federal agencies to review their contractors and subcontractors uh, that are employing H&B work visa work visa holders, and also gave some guidance on uh, the NSA related compliances. So in this video, we look at all these details. So these are the things we look at the background. Uh, we look at the summary of what the executive order is and uh, how it will impact all the H1B visa holders. And we look at some uh, common FAQs at the end as well. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed to our channel, do subscribe to get regular updates. So to start with, uh, how how this uh, whole thing was triggered was uh, because uh, there was an announcement done by Tennessee Valley Authority, uh, which actually said that they will outsource 20% of its IT workforce to foreign companies and where uh, they were where it was escalated very much to a very high level. And that was the trigger for this. And eventually it ended up in this executive order that was signed by President Trump, uh, you know, uh, which which we'll look at in, in detail. So the background, if you look at it, right, uh, from a U US federal agency's perspective, uh, they employ a lot of H-1B workers. Um, so here is a graph that is picked up from data using H-1B grader. In fact, they have beautiful reports uh, that uh, that they've created uh, in context of this uh, uh, this, this uh, executive order. So it, it lists uh, some of the major uh, federal US federal agency organizations and uh, how many subcontractors or the companies that employ them. As you can see, there is a significant amount of uh, workers that are employed uh, you know, by these agencies. So the goal is uh, for uh, for federal agencies to review these their practices and uh, how they're impacting the you know U.S. workers and other aspects as well. So here is the summary of the executive order. So the first topic uh, that they ask is you know the they want to review all the work uh, guest worker visa programs uh, and uh, they say that um, the goal of the executive executive branch is to make sure Americans are getting jobs and in terms of uh, you know the you know current situation with covid uh, they believe that it's more important to for uh, for them to emphasize uh, uh, that american workers get jobs over uh, temporary uh, work visa holders uh, and um, they say that you know how giving uh, these jobs to uh, workers like h1b visa holders will reduce the opportunities and uh, creates uh, more more difficulty for us workers so the first thing that uh, the executor instructs is uh, to review the hiring and uh, contract process that are uh, employed by uh, you know the federal agencies for their contractors or subcontractors for the fiscal years 2018 and 19 what it means is uh, the fiscal years of 2018 starts from october 1st 2017 and uh, and it lasts uh, for about 2 years right so i mean uh, because uh, the fiscal year starts in october and uh, goes until september 30th so for two fiscal years they want to review this and what in specific what they want to look at is uh, you know uh, if uh, they want to see if uh, temporary work visa holders were used to uh, you know, complete the work of any of these federal agencies, you know, uh, be it a direct contractor or subcontractor. And what are the nature of work that they did? Was it special occupation? Was it not? And why were they hired? These kind of things, right? And they also want to look at if uh, U.S. workers were affected with this, uh, with these sub subcontracting uh, to H-1B visa holders, um, kind of companies, or if they really impacted in national security. And also, they want, uh, you know, uh, the executive order also instructs these agencies to review the impact of offshoring, right? Offshoring is a big thing, right? Uh, in in all the in all the U.S. companies, and uh, they want to see why the work was, or you know, how uh, what was the previous work that was in U.S. and uh, when it was outsourced to you to uh, offshore, how, what all impact it had on U.S. workers, and uh, if those workers who were impacted were uh, eligible for assistance under this uh, trade adjustment uh, program, you know, which is basically a federal government program, right? Uh, the third one is they want to make sure uh, the offshoring did not have any implications on the national security. Yeah. So as you know, uh, Trump administration has been very, very, um, you know, uh, uh, strict about these national security aspects. There are many biometrics things now, extreme vetting situations. So they're very much, uh, you know, all on all in on national security. So I think this is one of the things they're trying to use to limit, uh, you know, people coming in as well. And uh, they also want to assess the negative impacts of hiring these uh, workers and uh, their practices, right? Um, so they also want uh, the agency's heads to basically uh, come up with a report that. Uh, outlines the negative impacts of uh, hiring of these temporary workers like h1b workers uh, you know and, and also uh, i mean through contractors or subcontractors right and also they want to uh, you know i mean the execute order also expects uh, instructs these agency heads to provide uh, 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 proposed actions to improve the economy and improve the you know federal procurement process uh, and also protect the national security right so it also tells that you know uh, to check with uh, 
the employment practices of these agencies if they're following the US president US citizenship executive order so this was from 1970s you know what it tells is uh, if uh, you know all the all the US government related activities should be uh, done by uh, US citizen citizens only for especially federal government jobs so just want to make sure you know um, if there is no direct h1 b sponsored or you know for these sorts of things right so they want to make sure uh, this this one is also compliant and what they ask is to submit a report within 120 days 120 days from the date of your which uh, comes to december the 1st and uh, what it suggests clearly is it should include analysis recommendations and any possible presidential actions right uh, maybe if you need another another executive order any of these things right so this you should outline all these things so that it uh, actually protects uh, uh, us workers and uh, you know uh, is much more favorable in that aspect and now the other uh, section that uh, the executive order also has is uh, measures to protect us workers within 45 days and uh, this is nothing but it's uh, you know it says uh, you know directing uh, us department of labor and uh, department of homeland security uh, to basically review for the lca compliance right uh, as most of you know uh, uh, h1b holders uh, need to file uh, uh, basically uh, an lca uh, before uh, uh, before they apply for uh, the h1b petition and uh, sometimes you know there are uh, you know the, the lcs are not fully compliant either it could be wage related things or it could be uh, you know work conditions or if there is no lockout so i mean there is no new changes uh, per se but they are asking uh, basically the executor asks to make sure all these uh, basic policies of uh, uh, lcr are fully compliant or not you know and if there are no impacts to uh, uh, the us workers uh, you know that's what they want to verify and now looking at the impact right so this is something that uh, you know many there are many people who actually um, you know basically uh, make it uh, sound very very big but fundamentally there is no change to h1b rules you know so there is no changes to h1b rules and uh, the executive order does not change any of these h1b rules it does not impact on the h1b processing done by usas there are no new rules that are uh, created by this so there is nothing to worry if somebody tells okay, oh you can't go to us no, no nothing is happening on that line the second one is uh, what it clearly tells is uh, to look at federal agencies only you know so there are few hundred uh, thousand you know few hundred organizations uh, that are part uh, that are for, that fall under uh, federal agencies uh, uh, you know so these so these agencies uh, will be reviewed uh, you know thoroughly basically or their i mean the agencies will review themselves basically you know it's not like a third party is going to do that so they will actually review themselves and they want to make sure that uh, what they're doing is 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 as per the you know to protect us workers end of the day right and the intent is to suggest recommendations within 120 days so nothing's going to happen today or tomorrow uh, so they they there is an action plan of action and this will only happen after 120 days and now uh, what could what we could expect uh, is uh, you know there could be more scrutiny on the practices right you know uh, at these federal agencies and it and also it will not impact any h1b approvals if you are already uh, you were you working with them or you are you know planning to work with them or uh, you know so it may or may not impact the h1b approvals uh, directly because uh, this does not really stop any of that per se but it actually asks them to review and suggest the practices so it may not have a direct impact but in the future after the report comes in then uh, then there may be some 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 impact right and again if you look at it there is uh, uh, you know uh, 120 days runway so if you are currently working at a federal agency as a contractor on h1b visa you technically have 120 days runway to basically plan for options you know i mean worst worst case scenario if something uh, you know happens and this uh, goes into effect and let's say they say that they should not hire or any any temporary workers and only your citizens then you will be out of uh, you know the contract job right so you need to plan for it so that's why you know it's better to uh, be safe than sorry so so that's why uh, so this is something you need to consider if you are if you are currently working at a company uh, as a contractor federal agency and uh, and plan ahead for that right and now looking at the 120 day outcome uh, timeline i think uh, you know you need to really be uh, watch this uh, date very very closely right if you see november 3rd is the us elections date and uh, the executive order uh, you know may or may not be valid you know if trump doesn't make into make it into the office so if uh, if democrats win the election and if president trump is not going to be the president uh, next president so this our this executive order may or may not may not even exist you know the completely it may change so it completely depends on the election outcome so it's too hard to uh, i mean it's very hard to say uh, i mean looking at the way things are you know you never know anything can happen uh, but again so the election will have a significant impact on what the long term effects of this uh, is going to be and now looking at the general lca practices right so uh, you you if you are an h1b holder you need to make sure you have proper lca first of all and it was properly filed and you are compliant right so sometimes some employers actually keep uh, 
less wage uh, you know uh, so that one is something you need to really watch for so there will be audit there may be extra audits they may watch more closely again there are no change in h1b related lc or lca regulations or rules uh, they just want to make sure they're not you know this uh, i mean uh, us workers are not impacted and uh, all the ru rules are followed as per standard lca guidelines so this is what uh, uh, the 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 summary is and there is no impact for perm as such right i mean if you are processing perm with uh, department of labor it does not uh, really impact as of this uh, as of today the executor does not talk about it right so there is no impact as such right uh, and also if you are doing green card processing with the uscis that doesn't impact also and these are some questions that came up uh, again uh, it's not like a big big panic kind of a button right it's only targeted towards federal agencies and some guidance around that so so i mean uh, i mean keep following the news and uh, we will definitely keep you posted on the updates so if you are a federal uh, uh, agency contractor do definitely uh, plan for backups and then be prepared so thank you for watching and uh, do subscribe for updates we will continue to bring in more updates